In the world of energy, batteries are the unsung heroes. They store power, bridge outages, stabilize grids, and make renewables like wind and solar viable at scale. But today's most common solution, lithium-ion batteries, comes with a trade-off. They degrade over time, carry fire risks, and struggle with long-duration storage. Now imagine a battery that lasts 20-plus years. That doesn't degrade. That doesn't explode. And that can store renewable energy at grid scale. This isn't science fiction. It's happening. It's called the Vanadium Redox Flow Battery, a forgotten invention from the 1980s now making a powerful comeback in the race toward a net-zero future. So why haven't you heard of it before? And could it actually power the cities of tomorrow? Let's find out. Before we proceed to the video, don't forget to hit the like button and ring the notification bell so you never miss our upcoming videos. The Renewable Energy Paradox Here's the paradox. The more we invest in solar and wind, the more we need a solution for when the sun sets and the wind dies down. This isn't a minor issue, it's the central bottleneck in the clean energy transition. Peak production doesn't match peak demand. Energy is wasted because we can't store it long enough. And lithium-ion, though revolutionary, isn't built for large-scale, long-duration storage. It's expensive. It degrades. It's flammable. And it's not environmentally innocent either. Cobalt mining, thermal runaway, recycling hurdles. Enter flow batteries. Unlike traditional batteries, they don't store energy in solid materials. They store it in liquid. And among all the flow battery chemistries, vanadium leads the pack for one critical reason. It uses the same element on both sides. How vanadium flow batteries work. Let's break it down. A vanadium redox flow battery, VRFB, consists of two tanks filled with vanadium-based electrolytes in different oxidation states. These liquids are pumped through a cell stack where a membrane separates the two sides. As the liquids flow past the membrane, electrons are transferred externally, producing electricity. Now here's the magic. Because both tanks use vanadium, just in different chemical states, there's no risk of cross-contamination. That's a problem that plagues other flow batteries. With vanadium, you avoid it entirely. Also, the liquid electrolyte can be reused almost indefinitely. Unlike lithium, it doesn't degrade with use. Want more power? Scale the cell stack. Need more capacity? Expand the tanks. This decoupling of power and energy is what makes VRFBs ideal for stationary long-duration storage, like solar farms, wind stations, and microgrids. Advantages over lithium. So what makes VRFBs better than lithium-ion for certain use cases? Start with lifespan. Lithium batteries offer 3,000 to 5,000 charge cycles before degradation kicks in. VRFBs? Over 20,000 cycles with virtually no performance loss. Safety? Lithium can combust. Vanadium flow batteries don't burn, don't overheat, and have no thermal runaway risk. Need 100% discharge? Lithium prefers a partial cycle. VRFBs give you 100% depth of discharge without damaging the system. Even after 20 plus years of use, the electrolyte can be extracted, reprocessed, and reused, making it economically and environmentally sustainable. And finally, scalability. With lithium, you need to stack more batteries to increase capacity and power together. With VRFBs, you size the tanks for capacity and the stack for power independently. This flexibility is a game-changer for utilities and industrial-scale users. The downsides. Of course, it's not all upside. First, vanadium is expensive. Most of it is extracted as a byproduct of steelmaking, with supply concentrated in countries like China, Russia, and South Africa, making it geopolitically sensitive. Second, VRFBs are physically large. They're heavy. They require tanks, pumps, and plumbing. You're not putting one in your phone or car anytime soon. They also have lower energy density than lithium, meaning they store less energy per kilogram. And while their lifetime cost may be competitive, their upfront cost remains high. 
For cash-strapped utilities or startups, this can be a deal-breaker. So, no, VRFBs won't replace lithium-ion. But that's not the point. They're not for your phone. They're not even for your home. They're for the grid, for solar farms, for wind backup, for stabilizing a nation's energy supply over hours or days. Where they're being used. China is leading the charge. In Dalian, they've built the world's largest VRFB system with a planned capacity of 400 megawatt hours, enough to power tens of thousands of homes for several hours. It's a pilot for future grid integration across the country. In Australia, Yadlamalka Energy has launched a large-scale vanadium battery to support renewable energy in remote areas. The UK's Infinity Energy Systems has deployed VRFBs in industrial parks, while Largo Clean Energy is pushing development in North America. And in Japan, vanadium flow systems are used in remote islands, where grid expansion is expensive and renewables need stability. Governments are also stepping in. The U.S. Department of Energy has prioritized long-duration energy storage, naming VRFBs as a critical technology. Grant funding and pilot programs are accelerating the ecosystem. Meanwhile, leasing models are emerging where users rent the electrolyte, lowering upfront costs and encouraging adoption. It's still early, but the signs are there. The supply and innovation game. So what's holding VRFBs back? Two things, vanadium supply and manufacturing scale. But both are changing fast. On the supply side, researchers are exploring new sources, oil ash, mine tailings, and even seawater. In the US, companies are reviving old uranium mines with high vanadium content. Recycling programs are also ramping up. Some startups are working on solid vanadium electrolytes or hybrid chemistries to further simplify the system and cut costs. On the manufacturing side, modular systems are making installations faster and cheaper. 3D printed membranes, AI driven fluid management, and pressure balanced tanks are all pushing boundaries. And let's not forget, vanadium doesn't disappear. It's not burned. It's not degraded. It's a closed loop. That's why leasing models are powerful. You don't buy the vanadium, you just use it. As investment pours in, the economies of scale will follow. Much like lithium-ion a decade ago, we're seeing the inflection point approach. In the end, it's not about replacing lithium, it's about solving a different problem. Lithium is for mobility, VRFBs are for endurance. The world needs both. But if we want a grid powered by wind, sun, and sustainable sources, we need batteries that can handle the dark hours, the stormy nights, the demand peaks. We need systems that last decades, not years. That don't explode, that don't degrade, that don't compromise safety or sustainability. And for that, vanadium redox flow batteries might be the best solution we've got. They're not flashy, they're not trendy, but sometimes quiet revolutions last the longest. If you enjoyed what you saw, don't forget to hit the like button and ring the notification bell so you never miss our upcoming videos. Your support means a lot to us. Take care until the next one, and feel free to drop a comment sharing your thoughts. See you soon.